if you're trying to teach yourself the more advanced level of artificial intelligence, specifically things in the realm of energy-based neural networks, that would be things like the Boltzmann machine and all of its derivatives, or if you're trying to go into variational methods, variational autoencoders and other variational things, and if you're having just the most difficult, horribly awful time, there is a reason for it. It has nothing to do with, you know, you're not being smart enough. You're smart enough. There's definitely, you're definitely smart enough. And it, it's not even that you don't know enough physics, although it'd be mighty handy if you had a PhD in statistical physics, if you had that tucked firmly in your pocket. Yeah, that'd help a lot too. It'd help a great deal. But it's really something different. And that is that as you pick up one of these really classic papers, one of these beautiful ones that you would love to be able to read and master, to like really like, I get it. I understand how this whole thing works. And you're finding that you're just getting blown out every few phrases because there's a new concept, a new terminology that's being introduced, and you just can't keep going to Wikipedia and Googling on terms and, and breaking it down. It's just not coming together. In fact, it's, it's turning into a flurry of little terms all coming at you, and that's what we call death in Donner Pass, the white out blizzard in Donner Pass if we haven't met before. Let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Aliana Moren, founder and chief scientist with Themesis. And now, since we're starting a new short course series, the founder of Themesis Academy. So I've been teaching artificial intelligence, three different courses for the past eight years uh, through Northwestern University. And now we're teaching courses through Themesis Academy as well. Totally unrelated, except that they're both dealing with artificial intelligence. So let's talk about this. Suppose that the paper that you've picked up, the one that you'd love to understand, totally encourage this. This would be, say, Salakushinov and Hinton, 2012, and that's where they present a fairly deep discussion of the whole deep learning method, the one where you start stacking these Bolton layers. Now, it was preceded by a 2006 paper by Hinton and Salakutinov, meaning at that time, Hinton was the lead author, Salakutinov was his graduate student, and that was published in Science, a very famous paper, and it introduced deep learning methods for the first time, but papers in Science must be brief, and I think that was about four pages long. They just barely had enough room to get the basic concepts across, show a few results, and that was it. That's just how, how things roll when you're publishing in those very high-level journals that are catering to the broader audience. Six years later, Salakushinov, Ruslan Salakushinov is the lead author, and they're doing a more expanded paper. And suppose that's the one that you pick up. The literature review, the introduction is beautiful. It's beautifully crafted. I love the way that Salakushinov, by this time, he's got some seasoning, some depth, and the way that he pulls together all the thoughts that contribute to this evolution of deep learning is masterful. He and Hinton, of course, both, they co-wrote. Here's what's interesting. It's unless you know the material very well. That's a devilishly hard paper to read. It is, in fact, the centerpiece of the upcoming Themesis short course in the top 10 terms in statistical mechanics because it's it so perfectly captures that, that sense of oh my God, I'm trying so hard and I can't figure this stuff out and there's concepts coming in from all these different disciplines and I don't know how to understand it. That's what many of us face and it's, it's what keeps us from the level of mastery that we desire. But there's a reason and it's not even just all these different terms. And the reason is this. when you, By the time that you've entered into the classic paper, you're joining a conversation that the authors have been having for, it could easily be 20 years or more. In the case of this particular paper, the Salakutinov and Hinton 2012 paper, preceded by the 2006 Hinton and Salakutinov paper, there was a lot of really, really important work. 2002 is when Hinton, on his own, it was a solo authorship, presented the contrast of divergence algorithm. That was a big step forward because Prior to then, Boltzmann machines and restricted Boltzmann machines certainly did exist. But there was a limit that they really didn't stack very well. And the, the methodology for training them just, it wasn't powerful enough. 
for multiple reasons. It took Hinton operating in near isolation for the better part of 20 years to come up with that breakthrough. Because think about this, original 1982, that's Hotfield, his work based on 1974, William Little, you're starting to see this emerge into the whole neural networks realm of 1980s approximately, uh, with Hotfield in 1982, and then Hinton with his colleague, Terence Sejnowski, a, a famous name, very brilliant, beautiful man, and then their then graduate student, David Ackley, do the first Bolson machine papers. That's in the 1983 to 1985 time frame. By that 1985-ish time frame, it was more Hinton leading that effort. By the way, links to all the papers that I'm discussing here will be in the blog post. So please check out the blog post. And as always, we put a link to the blog post in the description box below. So from this YouTube to the blog post, from the blog post to all the papers that you're looking for, that's, it's just very easy. So here we go. Mid-1980s, early 1980s, Hinton and colleagues are developing the first instances of the Bolson machine. Then they refine it into the restricted Bolson machine using a notion advanced by Smolensky. And he basically said, cr cut out the crosstalk. Within that hidden layer, don't let the hidden layer nodes talk to each other. And within the input layer down here, don't let those input variables talk to each other. And really, there's no reason why they should. And then at the output layer, it, I'm, I'm anthropomorphizing this a little bit because it really isn't an output layer all the input and output nodes are really one group, and they're not even specifically a layer, they're one group. That notion of input and output nodes is an artificial notion that we introduce because that's how we're conceptualizing things, and we're trying to make it look like a multilayer perceptron, even though it isn't. But the similarity is your set of input-output nodes and the hidden nodes that's the common ground between the Bolson machine, the restricted Bolson machine, where the crosstalk between layers is removed, and the multilayer perceptron, which doesn't have any crosstalk and never did. Back to the main theme. So here we are, early to mid-1980s, original evolution of the Bolson machine, and that led to all of its descendants, including first the restricted Bolson machine, which is right in the tail of the original. There was a lot of work done between the mid-1980s and the early 1990s, and then, as we all know, there was that dead zone, the neural network's winter, as it's called. And it started to crack open in 2002 when Hinton developed that contrast of divergence algorithm. And then the big breakthrough happens around 2006, and by that time, Hinton has picked up steam, and he's got people working with him on multiple projects, and big breakthroughs are happening. So the reason that it's hard to read the 2012 paper is that it depends on the 2006, which depends on the 2002, which depends on papers that are really kind of in the mid-early and later 1980s. So it's, it's like joining a conversation. And just as you couldn't walk up to a couple of people chatting, say, on a golf course, and they're talking about people that they know and who is done what lately, and it'd be kind of hard to pick up the gist if you hadn't previously met all those people, and if you hadn't spent time with them and knew what was going on. Similarly here, it's very hard to just walk into the middle of a conversation, and that's what it's like when you're picking up these truly significant papers. They're built on layers and layers of conversations that have happened over, in this case, not just 20 years, but the preceding 30 and that explains a great deal. So the new Themesis short course on top 10 terms in statistical mechanics starts Monday, January 15th. It runs for three weeks. You get a little something every day. And the purpose is we're going to use that Salakutinov and Hinton paper as the first of our important resources. And we're going to go through the terms, not just statistical mechanics. I was going to limit it to that, but then I kept thinking, no, 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 people really want that feeling of just being able to sit down and read that paper and having that breakthrough. And so we're going to do that. We're going to work through the full introduction of that paper, and we're going to pick two others. One of them will be a Friston paper. Same kind of thing. By the time that you pick up a recent Friston paper, oh, the recent ones are are very much enmeshed in his prior work. Let's say the 2013 or 2015 papers where he's laying it all out. By that time, 
he's really worked through a lot of the logic in his head and his predecessor work that goes back for about a decade. And we'll pick one more. And it will again illustrate the fact that once you get into the papers that you really, really want, the authors are building on a decade or more of work and they're pulling together concepts. And yes, they're doing their best to explain, but they're not tutorial papers. World of difference. They assume that you know the vocabulary coming in and that just a gentle reminder will take care of things for you. So we are going to go through these things in a tutorial manner. And at the end of those three weeks, you'll be able to read the introductions, go into the algorithms on your own, and feel so good about yourself. You are undoubtedly wondering how it is that you can take this wonderful three-week short course and feel so on top of your game about understanding the vocabulary for classic energy-based AI papers and even moving into variational inference. Please go to Themesis and go to our Academy page, top menu, and on the Academy page, you're going to see multiple links that will invite you to the Themesis Academy home site hosted by Thinkific. So it is themesis.thinkific.com, but the links will take you right there. As I mentioned, this short course is opening on Monday, January 15th. It's running for three weeks. Right at the moment, we've got a flash sale going on. As we get closer to the actual course start date, the price will revert to its usual. The important thing about taking this course now in this first kickoff version is that Right now, I'm spending a lot of time personally involved. That is, you're getting a sync session with me every week. I'm taking your phone calls. I'm responding to your emails. Far different from a typical MOOC. This is an actual get feedback from your professor. I'm asking you to do weekly assignments, and I'm actually giving you feedback, getting that information back to you. This is a real course with a real faculty member. You are fully engaged. I'd love to see you there, and you will be on top of your game for the real AI of 2024. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you again soon. Once again, Aliana Marin from Themesis.